uh, this week a, a change of pace. We're gonna we're gonna begin. Well, you'll see. I'm I'm fooling you. It's not really a change of pace, but I just want to begin in a, in a really different place. I want to begin in, in Venice. Um, some of you may have been to Venice. It's a beautiful, beautiful city in northeastern Italy. Like what a lovely place. Um, this is the Grand Canal. You can see it's really quite lovely. And uh, San Marco uh, Square, Piazza San Marco. Uh, you know, one of the most one of the most photographed probably locations in the world. Stunningly beautiful place. Venice is also a place with a rich uh, culture. If you travel off 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 the main island uh, onto some of the subsidiary islands, uh, you can go to some fantastic restaurants. And I had the opportunity to do that once, and uh, I went to this lovely restaurant, uh, Locando Cipriani, which is a famous restaurant. Uh, Hemingway used to used to dine there between the First and Second World Wars. And while I was there, I had this amazing dish. It's called cod. Well, I don't say cod; I say bacalao, but cod vincentina. Um, and it's a really spectacular dish made with salt cod. You can see there's a little recipe there for you if you ever want to make it. Well, it's just the ingredients, but you get the general idea. And this is a really high-end restaurant, really very expensive restaurant, really quite lovely. Um, I'm going to talk about how much it cost. It was ridiculous. But what I want you to see is that this key ingredient here, which is, here it's described as wetted cod, but it's, of course, dried cod, salted cod, uh, that you wet to, to re-moisturize it. So that's, when, that's how you use it in this recipe. Dried cod, salted cod is an incredibly common recipe in, in uh, dishes from all around the world. Here's uh, sonos de bacalao, uh, which is a Portuguese and Brazilian dish. And you can see that it has uh, salt cod, has flour, has water, butter, eggs, really, really basic ingredients. And you just combine them together and fry them in small balls and, and, and cook them until they're kind of browned. We can also look at this recipe, crocette de bacalao from Italy, which is, you can see, very, very similar. They had anchovy filaments, fillets. <laughs> Uh, and some Parmesan cheese, of course. But it's the same basic idea of salted cod, re-moisturized, combined with flour and other things, uh, and then fried and, and eaten up really, really quite a lovely dish. Here, here's a dish from Massachusetts called salt fish with cream. Um, and again, you use salt fish, you combine it with, with potatoes, with good butter and pork. This is from a 19th century recipe, one of, one of the earliest um, American cookbooks, kind of a beginning of an American cuisine, you could say. And for myself, growing up in Nova Scotia, I ate this kind of thing quite often because salt cod is a fairly common dish there. A lot of people might be from Portuguese or Italian backgrounds, uh, where this it would also be common there, of course. Uh, but certainly in, in, in New England and Maritime Canada, uh, salt cod is very, very common. Um, but it's also uh, you know, common in the Caribbean. Here's stomp and go, a dish from Jamaica. And again, flour and water uh, with the salt fish, some eggs, baking powder, thyme, some basic ingredients. And you fry, put them into balls and fry them until golden brown. And so what I would have in Nova Scotia would have been fish cakes, little like little sort of like pancakes shaped uh, kind of items. These are balls, those Italian ones, the crocchetti are those are balls. Um, di different ways of putting it together, but the, basically the same idea. So the issue is wh why, well, why are we talking about this right now? But but also, um, how did these come to be? Well, the reason they came to be is. Is, is really a story that's integrally related to the, the history of, of colonialism in Canada. And we've been talking about um, the way the empire expanded, the economic motivations for empire, uh, and you know, again, trying to disabuse of ourselves of, of, of kind of a settlement, and a, kind of a little house in the prairie, you know, settlers showing up and, and farming the land, that kind of thing. We, we've been kind of emphasizing something different, which is kind of a large scale scramble for resources. Uh, and cod was a key one of those resources. Uh, so today, we're going to pursue uh, an examination of the cod fishery. And you might think this is not a particularly um, romantic topic, uh, or even a particularly interesting topic, but I, but I assure you it is. It's a really fascinating topic because it really is one of these commodities. And as these recipes show, that it travels all over the North Atlantic world. Uh, and it's a key staple feature of economic development. Uh, in the colonies. European populations rely on, on, on protein sources like fish. In the early, early modern period, uh, they not completely fished out their stocks, but they're, they're, they've diminished their stocks really quite tremendously. Uh, so they're looking for new stocks. And some of them they find off the coast of Newfoundland, off the coast of Nova Scotia, off the coast, coast of New England, immense new fish stocks, particularly of cod. And cod is a, is a large, delicious fish. Um, of course, it also 
doesn't last very long out of the water. And so you need to find a way to preserve it. And they don't have refrigeration, so drying and salting become ways to preserve that fish. And that's what we're going to look at, the role that cod played, this dried, salted fish played, uh, both in the kind of global North Atlantic economy, uh, but also as a particular uh, force in driving uh, the development of the colonies uh, in the New World. And we're going to focus today on, on Newfoundland. We don't spend a lot of time in Newfoundland in this course, um, but it's important. And as I'll show you later uh, in a subsequent video, uh, that the cod fishery is very important for, uh, for the development of that colony, but also more broadly as well.